man, yep. Fight News Australia, I'm here with Kai Cutter France. We've just got a word that you will no longer be fighting Sergio Pettis. You'll be taking on Brian Morano in Las Vegas at UFC 245. Uh, this has been in the works for the last kind of three or four days. Um, yeah, Sergio's not fighting. He's uh, opted to be a free agent. That's the word I got. So, um, yeah, I'm just glad I got another opponent, uh, Brandon Moreno. We know of each other since Ultimate Fighter. So um, it'll be nice to, um, you know, share the cage with some uh, my fellow Ultimate Fighter contestant. Um, he's a good opponent. I've watched his last fight against uh, that Russian in Mexico, so um, yeah, he's he's done well for himself. He, he's higher ranked than me, so it's something we asked for. We wanted a higher ranked opponent on one of the biggest cards of the year in Las Vegas, and it's going to be awesome to be there when um, Alex wins the featherweight title. So uh, I'm really looking forward to this one, making my American debut, I guess. And um, yeah, that's what we're working towards now. So yeah, I'm happy with the matchup and, and the date. Was a part like Sergio Pettis is quite a big name. Was a part of you disappointed that you weren't be fighting him in Las Vegas? Yeah, stylistically, this was a good matchup. You know, striker versus striker. Um, I wanted to test myself against, you know, the higher level of this division. Um, but you know, it's it's it is what it is. You know, you can't really be too invested in uh, opponents and, and big names. Just got to roll with the punches. And uh, now I've got a new opponent, so I'm just glad I get to you know showcase my skills. Are still on that on the one of the biggest cards of the year. Um, three title fights on that card. And, and to go into camp with Alex um, for this fight as well, just training out of city kickboxing, I feel like that's going to make the difference. Um, I've got you know so many killers at our gym that we can um, pull different styles from, different looks. Um, so we'll be more prepared for this fight, and um, yeah, we, we'll be we'll be ready. And you for a absolutely brilliant fight in your last one in China. Do you think that was one of your more impressive performances, particularly in the UFC? Definitely. Um, I feel like it was one of my. Oh, like, if not the best performance of my uh, career so far and um, I felt like 100% for that fight you know mentally physically um, I was just all there um, I was ready to go you know three rounds one round whatever the fight whether the fight was going to go um, I was just ready and I just committed you know 10 weeks of my life before that fight just to, I feel like my, my fight before that in, in uh, Melbourne wasn't a true representation of what I could do obviously I had a few injuries and stuff like that so Coming into this fight, this, um, that last fight in China, I was full strength, no injuries holding me back. Um, the mind was clear, I knew the game plan, and um, I just had full trust in my coaches and, and my teammates that prepared me for that fight. So I was happy to showcase you know, my whole skill set, not just you know, my power and, and boxing. Got to see a bit of kickboxing, a bit of takedown defense, um, and you know, putting on exciting fights is um, what I like to do, and, and to get Dana White to come up to me after my fight, give me his number personally, you know, say good fight, and um, that's when I was pushing for this Melbourne card. So it's kind of bittersweet not getting on the card, but still being here, being given these opportunities to be here as a guest fighter, being you know ringside when the the boys do so well, uh, put on the put on the show uh, come Sunday, and uh, I got another fight booked in Las Vegas. So it couldn't have worked out any better. Have you been texting Dana White? You've been using that number to your benefit. <laughs> I haven't. Eh? I don't want to um, burn a bridge just yet. So, um, yeah. Gotta no. be careful with him. Eh? Exactly. Yeah. I don't want to do any drunk texts as well. So, <laughs> drunk phone calls. Now. Um, yeah. No. It's pretty cool to um, you know have the boss's number on my phone and and uh, I guess to be an individual, not just be a teammate of you know the boys Dan and, and Israel. They're doing so well, but it's nice to kind of step out on my own um, and and uh, be in some new blood for this flyweight division and um, get get. Uh, it's opportunities like this to come out as a guest fighter and um, yeah, to soak in the city and, and not have the pressure of actually fighting. And just to be on Dana, Dana's radar, like you know, Dana has 500 fighters under him. He probably doesn't know everyone, but you know he knows who you are. That must be a pretty good feeling. Yeah, it's an awesome feeling knowing um, when he when he came up to China. You know, uh, it was a ris risky fight, especially everyone was you know why don't you wait for the Melbourne card? It's a massive opportunity, but it's like uh, in my head I, was, I wanted to do a card on my own because I knew I'd get a lot more exposure and a lot more attention on me. Um, so that was kind of my method behind that. Um, and it kind of just all worked out. I got the win. Dana White was right in front of me. I impressed him. And uh, now I've got another full fight contract with the UFC. And um, we've got a, one of the biggest, uh, my biggest fight to date, fighting against Brandon Moreno in Las Vegas um, when there's two title fights, or oh, three title fights, sorry with one of my teammates so yeah no it's, it's a happy day so. and you said that you're a little bit disappointed to not be fighting this weekend but fighting in Las Vegas on a stacked pay-per-view like it doesn't get any better than that really as well like it's win-win isn't it exactly it's win-win um, I'm just I'm happy to be here to support the boys um, 
and uh, to kind of be involved still, and not fighting, but still kind of be you know a personality and just have a presence still here, and um, and then uh, yeah, come Las Vegas, yeah, it's going to be crazy, you know, being um, being back there after the, all, all these years on the Ultimate Fighter. Um, I got a taste of it. I, I was in the studio fighting, you know, in the old Ultimate Fighter gym, but now being in the T-Mobile Arena, where it's the fight capital of the world, you know, this has always been a bucket list of, my, of mine, a fight in Las Vegas, and uh, what a card to do it on. So, um, yeah, I'll be I'll be putting t- 10 weeks to come next week, just head down, working towards uh, what we need to do, and uh, we'll solve the puzzle of Brandon Moreno, and uh, just cl- keep climbing that ranking. So ideally, you know, I'm only two or three fights away from a title shot. I can see it right in front of me. Being on an eight fight, one streak, three and on the UFC. There's not many guys in my division doing that. Um, so take out another ranked opponent. You know, we could be, uh, it's a bit ambitious for me to say it, but when the UFC come back to Auckland next year, you never know. It could be, you know, headlined by me and Zahudo. So, um, yeah, it's, a lot, it's an exciting time for me and an exciting time for this flyweight division. And you told me the last time we chatted that you've been turned off by a bit of Cejudo's antics. Like, you were boys with him, but the way he's been carrying on, it doesn't really fly with you. And you said you were going to potentially unfollow him on social media. Has that happened? <laughs> I haven't, eh? I, I couldn't do it, eh? Even though, you know, I don't like the antics that he's been doing, but what can you do? We're talking about him now, so it's obviously working. Um, I haven't seen him yet, but I'm sure I'll bump into him sooner or later. But he messaged me before he came out. He said, hey, mate, I'm coming to your neighbourhood. Show me around. So we have a cool relationship. It's, it's never um, personal. It's just we're in the same division. Potentially we might fight, but that's just that's just how it is. You know, there's nothing. It's all, all business. And at the end of the day, we're still going to be friends. So, um, no, it's cool to have that side and, and – um, have a friend like that yeah how do you think you will take it if you were to fight him and he starts does start doing some of the antics towards you do you think you're the type of guy who will take the bait and go back in and be like what are you doing like how are you going to play it i just got to be myself you know <laughs> i can't really um speak for what he's going to do but yeah if he carries on like he does if we do eventually fight uh i just it's gonna I, i'm gonna find it pretty humorous i'm just gonna have to you know laugh it off because i yeah deep down i know what the real suhudo is and um yeah, I'm gonna let my fighting speak for itself. I'm not really gonna draw into the antics of it. If, if you know, it does happen like that, um, I'm just gonna stay true to what got me here, and that, that's fighting. Awesome, man. Cheers, brother. Thank appreciate you. Time. Cheers. Appreciate your Thank time, you. bro. Thanks,